What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Epax X10 Resin 3D Printer. It's not the biggest, and it's certainly not the smallest, but it might be just right for your resin 3D printing needs. So in today's video, I'll be giving you guys my initial thoughts on this pretty dang amazing resin 3D printer. Let's check it out. All right, so this is the Epax X10, and it is a mid-size resin 3D printer, and I honestly think it is a wonderful machine. It prints really dang nice, and I'll be going into a little bit more details here in a few minutes showing you guys some of the prints, but I initially wanna to talk to you about the unit itself. So Epax is a US-based 3D printing company based out of South Carolina. Their more popular machine, or I should say they're probably their initial machine was the X1. It's a much smaller version of this. I actually have one of those on hand, but I have not had a chance to actually open it up and print with it yet. The wonderful folks over at Epax sent these out for me to take a look at and show to you guys here. And we're not really gonna go into a whole unboxing or anything like that. Basically, this was shipped in two boxes. It was double boxed, essentially, very nicely packed. And all you do is basically take it out of the packing, take out all of the components that are on the inside, and you can pretty much just start printing with this machine. One piece that's pretty much the same with their X1 and this X10 unit is that it swings open in the front here. So lifts up and it makes it really easy to get access inside of the printer. As I mentioned, it's a pretty heavy unit. It's about 50 pounds, so not too heavy, and it's not too big either. I think this is a really great, again, mid-size printer here for anybody that's looking for something a little bit larger than an Elgu Mars or an Anycubic Photon in terms of its build volume. One nice thing about the unit as well is that the USB drive is here on the side of the machine, not in the back. So it makes it pretty easy to get access to that and it's towards the front, again, not towards the back of the machine as well. All right, now onto the important factor of that mid-size build volume, which I think is actually pretty large. It's 216 by 135 by 250 millimeters. That is a pretty good size build volume for a resin printer. The printer ships with a standard flat build plate. And just to give you some comparison of this build plate versus that here's an Elgu Mars, I can fit about three of the Elgu Mars build plates on top of this one here. One really cool thing that they do offer as an add-on is this angled build plate. So I initially started with the flat build plate, and by the way, when you receive your printer, the X1 and the X10, these come pre-leveled, so you can just pour in some resin and get to printing, which is really nice. Actually, I think Maker's Muse did a video on the X1 and also brought that up as well. I mean, it's just a great thing to be able to literally unbox, plug in, and start printing and not have to worry about calibrating the bed plates at all with those. I did have to level the uh, angled build plate, but it's really a simple process of just loosening the bolts, putting a piece of paper in, homing it, and making sure that it's a tight fit, and then homing the Z, or setting the Z axis, and then I can lift it up, put this in, and get to printing. One of the other things that they mentioned to me is that the build plates that they use are soft aluminum versus a hard aluminum that you typically see on a lot of the other printers. I mean, from a mechanical standpoint, I can't really tell the difference. Although I've had zero issues with prints not sticking to this, and I've had zero issues with getting prints off of the build plates. So whatever it is, it works really, really well on both of these here. This is also a UV LCD display that it uses on the inside to actually cure the resin. And that's a 10.1 2K screen as well that's being used. The printer also came with a few accessories, a metal spatula and a plastic one. These are sort of the standard components that came with some gloves and all that. But it also came with extra FEP sheets which is awesome. One thing to note about the Epex FEP sheets as well, they use something called NFEP, which apparently is a much more durable or basically better FEP sheet 
than you see on a lot of the other resin printers. And in fact, over on Amazon, you can order those FEP sheets for your other printers and they have phenomenal reviews as well. So something that you might wanna check out, I'll have links down below. Maybe if you have a Elgu or any Cubic or something along those lines and wanna check out those FEP sheets, I'll have links down below to that as well. All right, so the big thing that everybody's probably wondering is what is the price tag for this mid-size printer? And it's $1,199. Again, this is all heavy duty metal. There's no plastic parts on this that I can see at least on the outside that's being used with this machine. It's extremely well constructed. And again, I'm getting some stupidly nice prints off this machine. So I think it helps justify that price tag along with the larger build volume that you're getting from this machine. Short answer, do I recommend this printer? Yes, it's not a, even remotely a review yet. <laughs> But so far, I am absolutely in love with this machine. I forgot to also mention that it does have pretty much the standard touchscreen display and interface that you see on most of the resin printers. Super responsive, easy to work with. I'm very familiar with it, know how to use it. Uh, and it's, again, very simple and straightforward to work with. And the big one there being responsive. Some of the other printers that I've worked with it can kind of be a little bit of a janky experience working with those touch screens. So thankfully this works really well. One other note to call out is that it is fairly loud when it is up and running and printing. Here you can see I have the printer up and running and the fans are actually not running. Some of the other resin printers that I have, if it's on, the fans are on. Thankfully this machine, it can be on and the fans are not up and running unless it's actually printing. And again, it is pretty loud, but it's certainly not the loudest of the resin printers that I have, but it's definitely louder than some of the smaller units. And again, it's got multiple fans in here to try and help keep everything cool, or at least I'm assuming that's what's all going on inside the panels here. All right, enough details about the printer. Let's look at some of those prints. The first thing that I went and did was basically loaded up the build plate with a whole bunch of files and went to see how things turned out. So one of my absolute go-tos is this Mimic file from Cast and Play. Uh, pretty much everything that I have printed, I will have listed down below in the description of the video where you can find links to print these for yourselves. And everything that I printed here, I printed at 0 0.05 millimeters. Uh, I'll include all of my Chi2 box settings, including the support settings that I used. Uh, on screen here. So if you're interested in picking this up and seeing how you might be able to use those or tweak those, feel free to rock and roll with those as well. And thank you again to Blaine over on the Facebook EPAX group for sharing your Sierra Tech Fast resin settings. They worked perfectly for all of my different prints here. So I'll get some close-ups where you can see some of the details of the Mimic file. Uh, again, I, I really, I don't think I can really see any layer lines or anything like this on the actual print. I do have some issues with the teeth and I think that just had to do with me curing the print and not having the print perfectly cleaned off before curing it under the UV light uh, because there's some excess resin parts here that cured onto the front of the mouth. Next up was this John Wick coin from Nico Industries. Again, a, a file here that is really easy to run off and print. And it's one of those that, uh, again, I highly recommend pr picking up. It's a great test piece because you can just see a lot of details while printing vertically with this file as I'm dropping this here on the ground. I did not hollow this out. I think I hollowed out almost everything else here that I'm gonna be showing you guys, but this was a solid print and everything turned out pretty dang nice on this one. I also printed this distorted Taurus file that was uploaded by Zekas over on Thingiverse. I've seen this posted over multiple different Facebook groups that are being thrown down resin printers and I needed to print one for myself. And the detail again is pretty stunning. Honestly, what you're gonna hear me say throughout this video, I have not seen anything negative with these prints. This might be one of the better 3D printers that I have worked with in terms of just ease of use as well as just the overall print quality that I'm getting off of this machine. This is a throwing up Squirtle. <laughs> I don't watch Pokemon, I never played Pokemon or anything like that. I just thought this was a hilarious looking file. Uh, and one thing I liked about this was that it was really smooth. There wasn't a lot of details on it and I wanted to see how that would print on this machine. So again, all 
four of these files printed together at the same time. And I did have anti-aliasing turned on, which is a setting there in Cheetubox, which works with the machine. Again, big thumbs up for these guys over at Epax and this machine. So I also printed two larger files on this machine just to try and better utilize the build volume of it. This is Printed Obsessions KDA Evelyn file from League of Legends and yeah, it's pretty stunning how nice this printed. Uh, again, very, very smooth on the details here. I'll try to get some close-ups to where you might be able to see some of the layer lines on this. Again, everything printed at 0 0.05 millimeters and everything is really crisp on this particular printer. And I believe this took about 20 hours to print. And I believe a set of four prints here took about 11 hours just because of the spiral piece here was a little bit taller than all of the others. And I also printed this Red Skull bust by Jason Smith, who is just an absolutely crazy designer and made this beautiful file that you can download over on my mini factory. And I actually left all of the supports on this as well, just so you could see how this printed here, where I printed at an angle and you could see the amount of supports that went into this. I did end up removing some of the supports that were around the chin and on the teeth and on the cheekbones there, just so it looked a little bit cleaner to show this off to you guys. But I did wanna share this unfinished print with you guys. And I have rinsed this this off pretty thoroughly here before touching it with bare hands, but I have not cured this yet. So before I'm gonna cure it, I'm gonna remove all of the supports. Make sure you do that. You'll save yourself a ton of hassle to remove your supports before you cure things here. But this is an amazing piece that I'm dying to bust out my airbrush and actually paint this. It's a heavy duty machine and they're using high quality build parts from everything that they're telling me and I'm getting some stupidly nice prints off this machine. So I think it helps justify that price point versus what you might see on some of the cheaper machines that have a smaller build volume than this unit. So again, I this isn't a full review by any means, but I am absolutely loving this unit. And again, you'll definitely be seeing me printing more on this machine, and I do think that build volume is that really nice in-between size. This, and again, the printer's not huge either. The Phenom is a massive machine. The Transform is a really big machine, and you need to have a lot of space set aside for those. If you're not planning on printing ginormous things, this might be the perfect machine to fit your needs. It's wonderful to see so many options coming out and being available for people that are interested in getting into resin 3D printing. So it's something to consider. If you're interested in this unit, I'll have links down below to where you can check it out and pick it up. I'll have links to all of these files as well. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye now. Prusa Mini is really, 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 really,